Hi, my name is Jason Frank. I'm interning with Sensorpedia this summer here at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I thought this video would be a good way to give you a feel for the place that Sensorpedia is being developed in and to introduce you to some of the people involved in the project. For a more detailed explanation of what Sensorpedia is, check out the main website at sensorpedia.com. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and show you some of the ORNL campus. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about its research and finally introduce you to other Sensorpedia team members and what they're up to. So, first a little bit about me. I'm a computer science student at the main campus of the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. I've lived in Tennessee for the last 10 years and before that I lived in Indiana where I completed an undergraduate degree in mass communications. Currently I'm working on undergraduate computer science courses before entering the graduate program. Now, I'm not a very stereotypical computer science guy. My interests are wide ranging including many outdoor and sport activities along with uh, creative pursuits like songwriting and photography. You can view some of my photography at my website, treeoflifephotography.net. As for computer science, that's what's brought me here to Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So what's it like here? ORNL is the U.S. Department of Energy's largest science and energy lab. There's actually three large laboratories here in Oak Ridge. But just at this lab alone, there's a staff of 4,300 people, including 1,500 scientists and an additional 3,000 annual guest researchers. Now, if you haven't heard of ORNL, that's okay. Many were once in your boat too, like a former president of the United States, for example. On April 12, 1945, when FDR passed away, Harry Truman became president. And as the story goes, two weeks later, he was informed about the Manhattan Project that was going on here. Now, can you imagine how that conversation must have went? You know, uh, by the way, Mr. President, now that you're president and all, uh, we thought maybe you should know about this thing called the atomic bomb we're developing down in Tennessee. Well, now it's nearly 65 years later, and this place is still here, still developing that which was once thought to be impossible. But we don't build bombs anymore, so what do we do here? Besides Sensorpedia, what kind of research goes on? Well, without getting into too much detail, I'll just uh, hit a few highlights. And let me first just start with the building surrounding me right now in this particular quad. Uh, this building behind me right here is the cafeteria and conference center. The building uh, up there on the hill right there uh, houses research for national security and homeland security. The building right here as uh, engineering and computational sciences. And finally, the building we're heading to right there is where the Sensorpedia lab resides. As for major research, first let me point out the uh, gray silo back up there, right there. Uh, that's the Holyfield Radioactive Ion Beam Facility. Uh, there they study uh, nuclear physics and neutron sciences. They seek answers to questions like, how do stars explode? Another neutron science facility here on campus is the one-of-a-kind, $1.4 billion Spallation Neutron Source. Uh, it spans five football fields long and affords researchers new possibilities by allowing them to get down to the molecular level. For, examples, uh, for example, it helps biologists uh, determine protein shapes and activities so they can design more effective therapeutic drugs. Uh, it helps chemists to formulate longer lasting lubricants and tastier low fat foods. It helps engineers to develop safer and more energy efficient vehicles and aircraft. Another incredible capability here at ORNL is supercomputing. In that building right over there uh, researchers use some of the most powerful supercomputers ever built to study climate change and they seek answers to questions like uh, where should we plant crops for the most yield or should we convert croplands uh, to produce plants for biofuels. Uh, 
Another uh, use of this, this supercomputing power is to search for new drug possibilities to treat disease like cancer uh, or Alzheimer's. Now what I've mentioned here is really just the tip of the iceberg. So for a more detailed and higher quality video about the research that goes on here at ORNL, see the main website, ornl.gov. But now we are at the Sensorpedia lab. So let's go on inside and check it out. So as you can see, right in the middle of all this other research, the Sensorpedia lab resides. Now we're here. This is our building. This is where the magic happens. So what is, what is Sensorpedia? Well, if you look at other sites today, like YouTube, Facebook, you see that the, the users of those sites are extremely engaged in what they're doing for personal reasons. So our question is, can we apply those same appealing aspects to other domains like sensor data and government information sharing and homeland security? That's what Sensorpedia is all about. I'm now about to introduce you to the lead developer and my mentor, David Rezegi. David's research in the area of wide area sensor networks and human computer interaction has led to the creation of Sensorpedia. Uh, David's interests include heart shapes, potpourri, uh, and in fact, unicorns. So, so David, <laughs> tell us, why is Sensorpedia so cool? <laughs> well, first off, we have lots of hearts available. But uh, let me just, I'll start off by saying that I'm really excited to have Jason and the rest of the guys uh, on board with us this summer. Uh, with Sensorpedia, we were really trying to take the technologies and the design principles behind popular websites such as Twitter and Facebook and apply them to the area of sensor information sharing. Uh, we like to call what we're doing paving the cow paths, where we look at what uh, standards and uh, best practices have really already been proven in the commercial marketplace and just formalize those to show how they can be used for government and other organizations with a desire to share uh, sensor information. So we'd love to have your feedback on what it is we're doing. Uh, please join in the discussion on Twitter or on our blog, uh, sensorpedia.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, let's also give a quick introduction to some of the other interns here. This is Darren. Darren, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Darren Shea from Illinois College, and I am currently working on updating our Sensorpedia API doc and uploading some of the local DASMAT weather sensors. Very cool. Thank you, Darren. On over here, we got two Brandons. Oh, how you doing? I'm Brandon Zachary. I currently go to Tuskegee University. Uh, right now, kind of just working on a um, third party app for the um, air quality um, sensors that we want to put on Sensorpedia. Very cool. Is this your app? Yeah. Uh, picture of Washington DC there and some ozone um, stats. Very good. Thank you. This is the other Brandon. Oh, over here. This oh, hey guys. <laughs> my name is Brandon Reeves. I'm from Tuskegee University working on my third app, which is about water levels, which will be called Sensorpedia H2O. And it's right here. Got a little map of the areas. Very cool. Thanks, Randy. Okay, and here we've got Tim. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm from the Rochester Institute of Technology, and uh, I'm working on a Python library for Sensorpedia and maybe getting some of the feeds, some of the buoy uh, sensor data in there as well. Yeah, beautiful. And that's the blog you just posted? Yes, it about is. About your new library? Yes, it is. Awesome. Thank you. And we have Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Tompkins, also from uh, the Rochester Institute of Technology. And uh, I was here before, but uh, interfacing sensors with Sensorpedia, but now I'm working on an iPhone app uh, so that people too can be sensors and submit data to Sensorpedia. Great. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress. It's a little shot of it. A little bit of a preview. All right. Thank you, Chris. We have uh, another intern I'll try to introduce at another time. Uh, not here today. But uh, in conclusion, I hope this video has given you a feel for the people and place that Sensorpedia is at and uh, hope that you enjoy using Sensorpedia soon. Um, we know that most of you will be bigger contributors to Sensorpedia than we are, just like how many of you are contributors to Facebook already. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy. Bye.